Hi, I'm Josh Elledge, the Chief Executive Angel at SavingsAngel.com, and welcome to the Savings Angel Show. I'm podcasting to you uh, from uh, poolside. Now, it's not warm enough to go in the pool, but I am in Orlando, Florida. Now, I'm an extremely busy consumer expert, money-saving advocate, syndicated newspaper columnist, and that guy that turns digital entrepreneurs into media celebrities at UpMyInfluence.com. I love what I do and can't wait to get going on today's episode. So in order to help you save more, earn more, and live more abundantly on today's show, I'm going to be covering tax time and the most important things you need to know about tax season for 2018. Also, we're going to learn about cryptocurrency 101. What is the most important stuff you need to know? And do you need to know something about this? I'm going to talk really simple basics and you are going to love this because now when you hear someone else going blah, 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 Bitcoin, blah, 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 you'll be able to go, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's coming up. Finally, we're going to talk about nine side hustles that you can easily do from home and make more money. So with that, let's get going. Filing this year for 2018 taxes is bringing with it changes to the tax code. Now, as you prepare for tax time, here's what you need to know. The IRS opened up e-filing a couple weeks ago so you can begin filing your 2018 taxes. The sooner the better. You can greatly reduce your chances of being victimized by tax fraud by filing early. Now, thieves use stolen information to file fraudulent tax returns, pocketing any returns before the real individual files. Next, get all your docs in a row. If you don't have all your tax documents ready, you should be receiving them within, well, you should have them by now, as businesses are required to get them in to you uh, by January 31st. Yeah, you better have them by now. If you don't receive them soon, look into it right away. It may be a simple error or oversight, but you want to track down those sensitive documents. You may also discover that you're able to obtain secure digital copies. Now, you should still receive paper copies, but this may eliminate the need to wait for it to be sorted out before you file your taxes. Now, standard deductions have increased for everybody. Single filers this year, 2018, you get $12,000 standard deduction versus last year's $6,350. That's huge. Married filing jointly went from $12,700 to twenty. dollars 4,000 married filing separately. 2017 was 6350. This year, $12,000, just like single filers. And had a household last year, 2017 was 9350. This year, standard deduction, $18,000. This is good. Now, taking the standard deduction is now likely better for first for most filers over itemizing deductions. This is cool. You know, again, work with your tax professional to figure out if the standard deduction would work for you better than itemizing deductions. But look, as a consumer advocate, I like tax cuts for my people. All right. Now, personal exemptions, however, went away. Now, this means that previously in 2017, and in addition to the standard deduction, each person listed as a dependent was a further deduction of $4,050 per person. So for example, a couple filing together with one child received an additional deduction in their tax liability of $12,150 for three people. Now, if added to the previous standard deduction, they would deduct $24,850 from the taxable income, which unfortunately is a deduction loss of $850 with the new rules. So as a consumer advocate, I don't like this. Boo. Now, however, it's important to note that tax deductions are only reductions in the total amount of income you're taxed on. Now, taking our example once more, in 2018, if a couple makes $75,000 jointly, Okay, that would be moved down to being taxed on $51,000, whereas in 2017, it would have been $50,150. Not a huge change. Now, 
the tax brackets have shifted. And this is really important for you to understand. Even though personal exceptions went away, the shift in tax brackets is where most households will really see a noticeable difference. Now, tax brackets are the percentage you're taxed based on the income you earn. Now, for 2018, earners will be able to earn slightly more while still staying in the same tax bracket. Now, this is good news if you don't like paying as much money out in taxes. But the rare change in the marginal tax brackets is where it really lowers tax liability. So what are marginal tax brackets and how do they work? Now, unless you do not make more than the lowest income threshold where you're taxed at 10%, all taxpayers are taxed on portions of their income. This means that you are not taxed at one flat rate on the full amount of your taxable income. Let me explain using a couple with a taxable income of $75,000. Now, for 2018, they would have been taxed at 10% on the taxable portion of their income, ranging from zero to $19,050. Then their remaining income, $19,000 to $75,000, would be taxed at 12%. Now, this is a significant reduction from the same scenario in 2017, where the couple would have been taxed at 10% from zero to 18,000, um, a little bit less, but then they would have been taxed at 15% as opposed to 12% on that 18 to $75,000. So just using just straight numbers, this is a reduction in owed taxes. Thank you very much for all those who were part of the decision-making process for 2018's tax laws. Okay, but this is a reduction of owed taxes of nearly $1,700 for this couple who earned $75,000 together. Now, furthermore, the new brackets removed the marriage penalty that used to occur against joint filers. Now, income brackets are now simply doubled for married filers, whereas previously filing separately was sometimes a tax advantage. Definitely get the lowdown from your tax professional on that, or you can actually call the IRS. Uh, you Certainly, you're welcome to search around online, but again, your individual circumstances, I, I, I am just a fan of going ahead and you know, hiring somebody might cost you an extra two, three hundred dollars, maybe a little bit more, depending on if it's really complicated. I usually find you can save once you have a trusted relationship with a tax professional. That is money well spent. Uh, we've been using a very, very good accountant for many, many, many years. We're, we're very, very grateful for them. So let's talk about the child tax credit. Now, this doubled. Now, even though parents are losing the personal exemptions for each child, this change will help make up for it. Now, starting with 2018 taxes, filers with dependent children under the age of 17 will receive a $2,000 per child tax credit. Now, that's double the $1,000 it was in 2017. Now, why does this make a huge difference? Well, this is a tax credit not a tax deduction. Now, a tax deduction only reduces the amount of your taxable income. A tax credit, on the other hand, reduces the actual amount of tax you owe. To put this simply, if a couple with two children owed $5,250 in taxes, once the child tax credit for 2018 is applied, they would owe, get this, they can get they just have two kids. What they owe in taxes goes from $5,200 down to $1,200 in taxes. Now that is some serious tax time relief for you guys that have lots of kids. Now, as always, I highly recommend getting professional assistance with your taxes. With the new tax code in place, most people should see a reduction reduction in owed taxes, and I want you to get every penny back that's yours. Do me a favor. Please share this podcast episode with everybody you know. It's really critical that people understand exactly what's going to happen this year. This could be really, really good. And so when you share this podcast episode with friends, 
they are going to say, Whoa, thank you so much. And I, I promise I'm going to make you look good. So thank you so much for helping me share this message of abundance, all this great news for tax season 2018, and we can all live more abundantly. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you're like me and you've heard of things like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, uh, yeah, all that sort of thing. And kind of like, eh, your eyes glaze over and you're like, yeah, I should probably understand this a little bit, but I, I don't know. It just, it seems like a bunch of people wearing anonymous masks, uh, that are hiding out, uh, in these, uh, dark CD rooms, uh, with monitors all over the place. And, and only these guys understand what cryptocurrency or Bitcoin is. Um, so, I found uh, a good, uh, we've become friends now. He's a good friend of mine, Mark Moss, and he's a YouTuber and he really explains this stuff very, very simply. And I'm kind of excited because I, I now kind of get this. And so I wanted to share a, a conversation that I just had with Mark Moss. And I asked him all the questions that you might be afraid to ask because you don't want to feel like you don't know what you're talking about. I asked those questions for us, you and I both. <laughs> Because I didn't feel like I understood it. But now, thanks to uh, my conversation with Mark Moss, I now understand Bitcoin. So I'm really, really excited to share this conversation with Mark Moss from Signal Profits. All right. And with us right now, we have Mark Moss. Mark, you're the co-founder of Signal Profits. But and more importantly, I think for this is you're an educator. You're a, uh, I would say, uh, you've got a quite a big following on YouTube and, um, you're, you teach wealth creation and you, primarily you do that around cryptocurrency, which is kind of a scary term. And what I really wanted to do, uh, you're such a great, uh, educator and you bring this down. Um, you speak in, in terms, I think th that, that people feel comfortable and that can understand these concepts. Uh, but I just want to th say thank you so much for spending some time with us. And hopefully, uh, for those of us who have kind of heard these terms and we've been curious, but it sounds scary and it sounds way too geeky or or it sounds like it's something, you know, only that, uh, you know, maybe that rich nerds are doing. <laughs> um, that's not the case. And right. so thank you so much for making this so accessible for people. Yeah, Josh, thanks so much. Uh, it's my pleasure. I mean, I love to just, I love to share information. I believe that, you know, education, knowledge is, is the key really. And, and in all areas of our life and, and, um, there's a big piece missing around the financial education piece. And so, uh, really that's been kind of my mission is to, is to bring more education there. I love it. I love it. So if we could start off with just some basic definitions. And so there's three terms that, that I hear a lot and they're kind of all thrown around sometimes interchangeably. Um, but those terms I hear a lot are Bitcoin, crypto and blockchain, which again, all sound really kind of like something from the matrix. <laughs> Yeah. I think for a lot of us, but can you kind of just explain that, explain those in very simple terms? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to explain it very simply. Um, first off, I would just say, there's a quote that I always love to say, and that's principles are few methods are many. Hmm. There's only a few core basic principles in life and there's a thousand ways to apply them, right? So whether we're investing into real estate or stocks or bonds or your business or private equity or something scary like cryptocurrency, investing principles are investing principles. Yeah. How we choose to apply those principles vary, right? So uh, I would just start with that because it doesn't have to be as big and scary. A lot of this people may already know just even intuitively. Um, the second thing that I would say is that, especially with new technology, we don't always have to understand everything. Can you tell me exactly how your light comes on when you flick that switch? Not at all. <laughs> you use the internet every single day. Can you tell me exactly how this video from me to you is getting there? No, yeah, sorcery. But you use it. Yes. And you might have bought stock in an internet company and you probably bought Microsoft product, right? So we don't have to understand the technical aspects to use a product or make money from that product. Hmm. Um, so that being said, but, but to jump in a little bit, yeah. And so to answer your question specifically about, you know, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and, and so forth, from a high level perspective, Bitcoin is is the tip of the spear. It's, it's the one that's kind of more famously known. It's been around for about 10 years. And it was designed as a direct response to the banking collapse in 2008. So it launched in 2009. And it it was it was to be a new form of currency. It was a peer to peer. So that means person to person. 
Um, so right now you have like a Venmo app or a PayPal app and I have a Venmo or PayPal app and I can send money from my Venmo to yours or my PayPal to yours. And, and that may seem like it's peer to peer, but it's not. So my PayPal app then goes to my credit card. And then my credit card then goes to my bank. And then my bank then goes to your bank. And then your bank goes to your PayPal. Mm -hmm. So it had to go through like five or six gatekeepers, or we call them rent seekers, in between you and I. Now, there's a couple problems with that. One, it's extremely inefficient. It's expensive. Each one of those wants to extract rent or a toll. And then the bigger problem, people don't really see in the United States, but this is a global movement. But then the problem is, what if PayPal doesn't want me to send you money? What if PayPal blocks me or prevents me or stops me? What if a government wants to seize or steal or manipulate my money? And so we have these six gatekeepers in between you and I, and why can't I just give you money directly like we do with cash? Mm -hmm. Well, there's been a lot of reasons why, and mainly it's been a technology problem. Um, with a digital money, how do you prevent double spending and things like that, right? Like if, I, if you give me a file on my computer, I can copy that file over and over. So we had a technological problem. And so that was solved with Bitcoin. So now Bitcoin gives us a way to exchange money back and forth directly peer to peer without any what we call third party central administrators. I want to just talk about this for one second because this is revolutionary. So again, if you're if you're watching from the United States, maybe you don't get this, but this is a global movement and you have to understand why. So I don't like to talk about what, I like to talk about why. Yeah. So we have a problem with with what we consider money. Uh, money is controlled by central banks. Central banks produce as much money as they want. When an asset is duplicated and create more of that, it's called inflating the asset, right? You hear about inflation all the time. When you inflate it, it loses value. The medium home price, you know, in the 1950s was 50,000. Today it's 250,000. The price of the house didn't get more expensive. The dollars that it takes to buy it became worth less. Yeah, right. And so they're manipulating the money. Um, and then when they printed, so just in the last couple of years, the government, the US government's printed $4 trillion but you didn't get any of that money. I didn't get any money. Where'd it go? Went to the bankers, right? So now they're getting money. Then they, then they buy our assets. It gets into all these things. And I don't want to get into that. But, but in other countries, like in Cyprus, for example, a couple of years ago, the government went bankrupt and the government just took half of everybody's bank account. You know, in Venezuela right now, the, the currency has been losing value so fast that, you know, a stack this big used to buy a loaf of bread and today a wheelbarrow won't even buy a loaf of bread. And so those people have to leave their currency and go into something else like gold or like Bitcoin. Uh, in Zimbabwe, they're leaving their fiat currencies. They're going into Bitcoin, right? So it's, a, it's another form of money that allows us to go peer to peer without people in the middle, without being able to control us. And it's not just money. It's also information. So like I have young kids and the, the stuff they learn in school is not the same stuff that I learned in school. History gets rewritten. History go, you know, history is rewritten by the victors, right? And so using technology like Bitcoin, we can secure value. And when I say value, things of value. So not just money, but like intellectual property, things like that. And we can secure those in the blockchain and they can never, ever be manipulated or changed or deleted or any of that. So that's, that's the revolution. And so we've never had, uh, we've never had an opportunity in the history of mankind to be able to hold value that can't be seized, stolen, manipulated. And if I want to transfer to somebody else, it can't be stopped, blocked, or prevented. Yeah. So we've never had this in the history of the world. So it's a brand new technology. And so Bitcoin uh, is, is the digital money. The technology that it's built on is called blockchain. Okay. And the reason why it's important to understand that is because it's much bigger than just a, a peer-to-peer money. If we look at like what is technology, we look at like the internet. The internet is a new technology. The internet technology allows me to upload a file and download a file. It allows us to share information, right? So before the internet, I had to mail you a letter. Today, I can share the information online. I can upload videos to Facebook. You can download a video from Facebook. So we, so we share information. Now, how we use that technology is, is always different, right? So Uber is using internet technology for me to find a ride. And Google is using internet technology for me to search for a search engine. And Zillow is allowing me to use that technology to find a house. But Zillow, Facebook, and Uber have nothing to do with each other other than they're all built using a technology called the internet. Okay, so that's, wow. that's how we really break that down. 
The thing with the internet is that there's no trust. And so I don't know you, you don't know me. And it's kind of like that, kind of like that movie with like a drug deal where it's like, give me the cash. No, give me the package. And, and we don't trust each other. <laughs> so everything with the internet requires third party central administrators. So again, back to the PayPal example, um, or Facebook is a third party central administrator. Twitter is a third party administrator. And every, and even, even Uber, there's a company that sits between the driver and the rider because there's no trust. So it's like an escrow service, if you will. And this is what the blockchain technology has solved. This is the difference. So, so if the internet allows us to share information, blockchain technology allows us to share value. So that means I can share a smart contract, a contract that has like data logic, like if this happens, then this happens. So I don't need escrow. It allows me to share intellectual property. It allows me to secure land title records in a blockchain that can't be, and allows me to change money. So that's, it allows me to transfer value and not just information. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so blockchain is basically like Uber for what, whatever it is you use the, the platform for. No, no, no. Uber uses a technology, right? Mm -hmm. Uber is considered an internet company. They use a technology. In order to use Uber, you have to have internet access. Right. They use a technology called internet. Google uses a technology called internet. In order to use Google, you have to have internet access. Okay. So internet is the technology. The applications, Uber is an application of the technology. Google is an application of the technology. Facebook is is an application of the technology. But all three of those applications have nothing to do with each other. They're as different as can be. Ah. The only common denominator is they use a brand new technology. Okay. And so we have a brand new technology called blockchain, and it allows us to transfer value. And Bitcoin is an application of the blockchain technology. But there's thousands of applications of the technology, just like there are millions of of applications of internet technology. Yeah. So, uh, so Uber is to, uh, is to the internet, what Bitcoin is to blockchain then. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. Okay. And I think the final, uh, term cryptocurrency. So am I right? So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that uses the technology of blockchain. Right. So what happens is, is first of all, that word cryptocurrency is, is two things. So one, it's, it's cryptography. So cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology uses cryptography, which is encryption. Mm-hmm. So, and, and up until the seventies, it was illegal to use encryption and it's still borderline illegal. Governments don't like you using encryption because they want to be able to see everything. Yeah. Um, so it uses encryption that way. Nobody can seize it, steal it, manipulate it. Right. Um, so it uses encryption. That's crypto cryptography and then currency. Obviously it's being used as like a money. Overall, I believe that word is a little bit misleading because all these other blockchain companies are not meant to be currencies. And I'll just give you a couple quick examples. So for example, there's a company called Storage Coin. Now we know that like data hacking is like a massive problem today, right? We know Experian was hacked. It was the largest data breach in history. We know that the NSA, the United States NSA was hacked. And when they hacked the NSA, they stole their hacking software. And Mm -hmm. now they're using that hacking software to hack everybody. These data hacks are out of control. And it makes sense, right? If I had, if I had $1 billion in a bank, a lot of people are going to want to break into that bank. But what if I could have a billion banks with only $1 each? Nobody would bother. And of course, with data, that's not been possible, but there's a brand new technology and it's called blockchain. And this brand new technology called blockchain allows us to decentralize data. And instead of putting all the data in experienced servers, I can break it apart and put it across a million servers across the world with this brand new technology. And what data hacker would ever hack into a million places to get one piece (laughs) of data? They wouldn't. And so this data hacking problem has never had a solution until now. There's a brand new technology. But that, that um, in order to use that company called Storage Coin, I can participate, I can put a computer on the network, and I get paid with their native token, and it's called a Storage Coin. Generally, that would be called a cryptocurrency, but it's not meant to be money, right? It's meant to be like, you know, if I went to Chuck E. Cheese, I have to buy tokens to play their games, and in order to be on the Storage Coin network, I have to use their token. Boy, so I want to talk about like how someone gets started, but I think before I get into that, it's like, why should the average person who's like, I don't know, man, like I go to work, I get my paycheck, go to the movies, go out to eat. Why should I care about cryptocurrency? Well, there's a few different reasons. So first of all, if you like to make money, 
<laughs> there'd be a reason to do that, right? I'll, I'm going to come back to that one. The second reason would be if you like freedom, you like privacy, you don't like how um, our money's been manipulated and, and basically your money's losing value every day, especially if you're in other countries where these regimes like in Venezuela where your money's leaving, that's a big reason why you'd care about Bitcoin. But let's say you're in the United States and you live in this little like bubble and you don't care about any of that, but you want to make money. So um, this gets into the bigger picture, which is, um, you know, we can work really hard and we can be really smart and we can make good money. We might even get rich. We might even make millions or tens of millions of dollars. But to get really wealthy, it requires some luck. And what the luck is, is timing. So where real wealth is generated is around what we call these wealth cycles. And or they're, they're really their wealth, wealth transfer cycles. So there's certain periods of time that we get to where wealth transfers from one group of people to another. And it typically happens either one through massive economy crashes, but it also happens through new technologies. So over the last 200 years, there's been only five technological revolutions, steam engines in the 1700s, railroads, automobiles in the 1900s the telecommunication age that started like in the 70s and 80s, and now today with blockchain. And mm. each one of these technological revolutions created wealth for an entirely new, pe- new set of people. So the people that got rich in railroads were not the same people that got rich in automobiles. The people that got rich in automobiles like Henry Ford were not the same people that got rich in the internet age. Jeff Bezos, right? Or, uh, and the people that are getting ri- got rich in the internet age are not the same people that are going to get rich in the blockchain age. So every time we have a new technolo- te- technology, a new technological revolution, a new tech cycle, it creates enormous wealth. There's this enormous wealth transfer. And so for the average person who doesn't want to just put their money into their 401k every, every month and hopefully make five or 6% over 30 years, if you're looking to make extra returns, a wealth transfer during like a tech cycle is your best opportunity to do that. So that's a pretty bold statement to say, you know, of the tech cycles that you've mentioned, and those are some really big revolutions. You know, again, saying that crypto is this next uh, tech revolution, that's a big statement. Um, it is, but it's it's factual. So um, I, 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 it's a deep subject that's, that's hard to understand. I've put a whole, like, I think a nine or 10 page guide together that really breaks it down and, and makes it easy to understand. It's color coded. And I think you'll probably make that available, but yeah, to kind of go yes. through that pretty quickly, what happens is, is every technology cycle builds on the one from the past mm. and it takes value away from that. So for example, cars create a lot of value, right? Henry Ford was worth like 160 million at that time, which in 1900 was a lot of money. <laughs> The telephone came along and it took value from the automobile because now people didn't have to drive as much. They can just hop on the phone. Then uh, TVs came and that created a lot of value. And then VCRs came, which adopted faster because they could just go right on top of the TV, but it took value away from the TV operators because now I could just watch videotapes. Mm Mm-hmm. Then, then the internet came along and it scaled faster because it, it used the telephone lines, mm-hmm. but then it took value away. Now I don't need a telephone. I can just use VoIP. So each technology cycle gets bigger and bigger and creates more and more value because it takes all the value from the previous cycle. So the internet also took value from the automobile industry. I don't even need to drive to work to mo- anymore. Now I can just video conference right in. Right. So now it's taking value from the automobile industry. It's taking value from the telephone industry. So every technology cycle gets bigger than the past. So we know just from studying technology and studying history, we know that each new technology is worth more and for that reason. But we also know that going traveling by horseback was slow. So getting there a little bit faster from a car was more valuable. It wasn't life-changing difference, but it was more valuable. So it creates more value. And, and being able to use the phone creates more value. It's more convenient, right? But what, what the internet technology does is, as I said, it allows us to share information. And information is valuable. Information is super valuable, right? But Now, blockchain technology allows us to actually share real value, share money, share intellectual property, share smart contracts, which is way more valuable than just information by itself. So that's why it's going to accrue more value. So even at the dot-com boom, you know, went up in 2000, it crashed off a cliff. At the height of 2000, before it crashed, the market was valued at about $8 trillion. (laughs) Today, it's 
tens of trillions. But the blockchain space will be bigger because it's going to pull value from that and it's it's sharing valuable stuff, not disinformation. And so today it sits at about a hundred billion. And uh, just to get back to the dot com bubble before it crashed, it would be eight trillion. So imagine going from a hundred billion to eight trillion, right? That's almost a ten x return just just alone on that. Oh. Speaking of that, I think a lot of people heard that last year Bitcoin crashed. Can you kind of explain what that means and uh, how does that impact cryptocurrency as a whole and the legitimacy of the platform? Because again, I think that there's, if you're only just paying attention to news headlines, you probably just hear that and go, oh, well, you know, all my friends that keep talking about uh, crypto on Facebook or social media or whatever, uh, I don't hear them bragging so much because the Bitcoin market isn't going up, 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 up. Something happened. Can you kind of give us a uh, kind of explain what happened and, and what that means? So I'll go back to what I opened up with, which was what I said, principles are few, methods are many. Mm-hmm. It depends on on how you're looking at the market. So we know that one of the key principles in life is having long-term perspective. If you want to make healthy decisions today, you have to have a long-term perspective to be old and healthy, right? If I want, if I want to make the right business decisions today, I have to know that in five years, I want my business to be like this. And so uh, the reason why I say that is when you're talking about Bitcoin, it has been not just the best, but like a thousand times better than any other investment in the world over the last 10 years, Mm -hmm. five years, three years, two years, best investment in the world. Now, if you look at the last 12 months, it hasn't been good. Mm-hmm. So what what time perspective are you looking at? What time period? So uh, you could look at any market and go, well, if I look at just this little period, it's right. been really good or it's been really bad, right? You can paint the picture. But if you look at two years, three years, five years, eight years, 10 years, it's been the best investment there that there has been. So yes, you're right. The, the last year has been bad. The other thing that I'd say, so so then what happens is people aren't understanding what they're doing. And this is why understanding how these tech cycles work is so important because all of those five tech cycles I've mentioned, they all follow like the same pattern. There's like four phases of a technology pattern, uh, cycle adoption. And so if you understand that, then you know where we are in the cycle and you know how to invest. So what happens is, it, yes, the prices come down over the last year. What I would say is that uh, all markets have cycles, stock markets, bond markets, everything goes up and down, right? Nothing goes in a straight line. And so they're all going up and down. And obviously right now we're in a down market, but every down cycle we've had has been higher than the last. So last yeah. year's low was 3,600 or something like that. The, the, the low from the year before was 1,700. Mm-hmm. The low from the year before was 200. So yes, we had a we crashed, but we ended up more than double the low from the previous year. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, for sure. if you happen to buy right at the top before it dropped, you're down. But yeah. if you bought stocks right in 2008, you were down by 2009 too. And if you bought Amazon in 2000 for 80 bucks, by 2001 you were down to five dollars. Now it hit 2000 a few months ago. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, yes, it's down in the last month in the last year, but when you look at it over a long period of time, it's way up. It's the low of last year was more than double the low from the year before. Um, so if you've owned it for more than a year, year and a half, two years, you're still up on your investment. Yeah. The other thing is really, it's not about like who buys any investment trying to make money in a year. Like you're putting money into your 401k to retire in a year. No, you're going to put money into that for 20 or 30 years. That's right. right. As investors, you're going to buy a piece of real estate and and you're going to own it for one year and hope that you're going to retire off of that? No, you're going to own that piece of real estate for 30 years. They're going to pay your mortgage off for you, right? So we we should know that investing is a long-term game. And what happens is in, in early stages of technology cycles, this is what always happens. Yep. In early stages of technology cycles, only, only the few inventors know about it. So you just have like nerds in their garage, hobbyists <laughs> and tinkers. And then a few people start hearing about it and then it, it tracks some money. And what happens is the money runs ahead of the technology. Yes, the technology is there. Yes, the technology is probably going to change the world. But so much money comes in that it chases it up. But the technology is not there. It's not ready for adoption. It's not ready to be used. Hmm. And so then reality catches up and then it crashes. Boom. So then it crashes down. So now, but but the reality has as as improved. So now today, the reality is it's way further along than it was a year ago. But perception of it is here today. Now, eventually, right. perception will catch up. It's going to overcorrect and get above, 
and then it's going to come back down. And perception will continue to do this, at, at, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, it's like, well, you know, real estate in Florida, for example. You know, I we we were here when the uh, the market completely crashed, and you know, but in terms of like home value, you know, it would have been foolish to say, oh, that's it, real estate doesn't work. I'm, you know, I shouldn't be paying attention to real estate. No, you should be paying attention to markets and the fluctuations. And so, um, so crypto is it's, it's volatile, though, right? Well, um, it, 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 so what I would say just real quickly, I want to add is that it's investing into a new technology mm-hmm. is completely different than investing into real estate. Mm-hmm. Just like investing into real estate is completely different than investing into stocks. To invest into real estate, it's a completely different thing than it is to go invest into stocks, which yeah. is a completely different thing than it is to go invest into Forex, like foreign exchanges, which is a completely different thing than it is to go and invest into gold and silver. Everything has its own intricacies and its own strategies. So if you're going to invest into a new technology, it's kind of like venture capital. Um, it's super risky, which is why you can make huge returns, but it's, you're going to pay risk. You could wait 10 years until all the risk is gone, but then your returns are going to be small. So it's all about risk and reward. So if you understand how technology cycles work, and then you use the correct strategy, you can do really good with it. Mark, I should say that um, for someone who's listening to us, I, I want to lead people to uh, a few resources that you've put together. And so uh, first off, if you go to savingsangel.com, slash wealth. Mark, you had mentioned a, a guide and it is really, really good. I actually watched, uh, I, I went through this and then watched a video around it as well. It's how understanding tech cycles can make you rich. So if what Mark is talking about, you're like, okay, this guy clearly knows what he's talking about. You put together this guide and it's about nine pages long, um, very attractive, very easy to understand. And you can actually, so you can download that right now. It's at savingsangel.com slash wealth. Uh, and then also, Mark, I think someone who wants to learn more from you, uh, how we connected, and I, I've been watching your videos, um, which is why I thought, gosh, if there's anyone who can help explain this to my audience, you can. So if uh, when you're on YouTube, you can go to Market Disruptors, and that, that's your YouTube channel. Yep. And um, so you have a lot of subscribers. You put together great videos that, that explain this very, very simply. This is important. And I think that I, I, maybe if I could have you put on your your if you, if you're willing to uh, put on your prognosticator hat and so where we are right now for those who understand this and find a way to involve themselves or take advantage of the technology what kind of an advantage would we be at or that person be at than say someone who ignores it for another 10 20 years you know, today people are buying Amazon and Apple stock, right? Uh, people are buying it and selling it right now, this very second. You know, we know that a few months ago, Amazon stock hit $2,000. Today it's down. I don't know what it's at today, 15, 1600 or whatever. Um, but we know that in 2001, it was at $5. It had gone public in 97 for a dollar. It went to $80 by 2000. And all those people bought it at 80 and then it dropped all the way to five. Hmm. And all those people said, what the heck? I just bought it for 80. It's supposed to change the world. Everyone's going to do all this online shopping and online shopping is going to be this big thing and all this stuff. Well, guess what? In 2000, you couldn't even use online shopping. Mm. There was, we, didn't, we, had, we had something called dial-up. It was so slow, you couldn't even use the internet. There right. was no online shopping happening, but people bought Amazon stock because it was going to eventually be there. So all those people sold at $5. They're like, oh, what the heck? I'll at least get a couple bucks out. But then it hit 2000. So what advantage do people have of getting in now versus getting in in 20 years? Well, you could buy Amazon today and maybe it goes from 1500 to 1800 and you make a, a few percent there. But what if you had bought it in 2000 at a doll at $5, right? So that, that's the difference, right? So that's it, being an early adopter, being a visionary, seeing, you know, massive potential opportunity um, gives you that advantage. And like I said earlier, right, it's like, it's, it's volatile now, it's risky because it's so new, uh, but that's why you get 
huge returns, right? Mm. So um, you can wait later and buy Amazon today when the risk is gone, uh, but you're just not going to make those returns. And so because it is risky, you know, it's definitely not something that you want to go all in on. Um, It's something that you want to have exposure to. So maybe 10%, 20% of your portfolio, 5%, 2%, whatever is into crypto. So you have some exposure, but let's say that worst case scenario, it never works out. Well, you're not all in and you don't lose everything. And And that's just not about crypto. You would never go all into real estate. You would never go all into stocks. You would never go all into anything. And so you want to have assets in different areas. So that way, whatever happens, you're prepared. But I think you definitely want to have some exposure to this asset class. How does someone get involved then if they're like, okay, Mark, um, you know, like I've got, you know, maybe like $3,000. What can I do with that? And just, you know, buy and hold and invest in some sort of crypto. So I think, um, again, right, principles are few. So um, how would you get into any investment, right? Whether you want to start buying stocks, how are you going to start buying stocks? You're either one going to use like a financial advisor who's going to do all the research for you and tell you what stocks to buy. Um, Two, you're going to spend a ton of time researching it yourself. Or three, you'll buy some sort of like a financial newsletter that will analyze stocks and tell you what to buy. Those are your options, right? Right. And so this would be no different. If you wanted to get into you know, some of these crypto assets and get some exposure, you could one, um, spend you know, hundreds of hours trying to figure it out and figure out which best ones there are. Um, there really are no investment. There's, there's really no advisors that would take your money and invest it for you today. Um, there are some funds that you could buy into. Um, or the third is you could buy a newsletter and you could have someone do all the research for you, put it together and, and kind of hand deliver it to you. Um, and that's what I do with the gold market. I do that with this oil market. I do that with emerging markets like China. China, because I can't be in all those markets. And so we pay for information. So that, that's, that's a really good option. And can you kind of explain uh, exactly what, so obviously you do amazing work as an educator, uh, but, but you actually provide more help. Um, and can you kind of explain like how, uh, how Signal Profits works? Sure. So on my YouTube channel, Market Disruptors, it's a hundred percent education. I like to, t- I like to teach people how to think and not what to think. Mm. Um, you know, like the old adage of teach a man to fish versus giving him a fish. So if you follow me there, I, I talk about like huge, big, big level trends that are shaping our investments. And we talk about, you know, the innovation adoption that's happening and it can really help you with your investing if, or just even knowing about this asset class. But for those that want additional help, people always, well, well what exactly coins are you buying? What's your mm. portfolio? Then I do have a service for that. So if you want, in, you know, extra attention from me, if you will, um, uh, then then we have a service at Signal Profits, and and we have something for for the two main ways you would approach any market. One, you could actively trade it. So I'm buying and selling, actively buying and selling. Um, and that's good for people if you have that personality type, if you have the time and you like that. Um, and then we have like an investing side where it's kind of like just I'm going to buy this and I know in two or three years it's going to be worth a lot of money. And I just want to know which ones I should buy and hold. Hmm. So we kind of have services for both. And in, and in that, you know, we're basically you're getting the benefit of we have a full team that does just 24 seven market research on the investing side. Each month we put out like a 10 page report on like the best company that we think at that time. That's in the trend within the trend. Then within the trend, before you invest in any company, you should do your due diligence on the company. Preferably, you should talk to the management or the owners of the company. So we do that. So you get the research, you get the videos, you get the the, the Q and A. Um, so you get all that, everything that you would need to be informed of the market. Um, and then on the trading side, like I said, uh, if you want to be a trader. Um, each day it's like buy this coin at this price and then sell it when it gets to this price. And then you make a profit that way. So um, kind of something for uh, everybody. And I, and I think just real quick as a, an analogy, like if I was in real estate, I could like buy an apartment building or a house and then I own it for 30 years and people pay it off for me and it's worth a lot of money. Or I could like actively fix and flip homes. I could buy a home. Right do the renovation on it and sell it. And I, and I could do both. So I could be fi- flipping homes and then the good ones I keep and I put into a long-term portfolio. So you can trade and invest together or you can do one or the other. And that's just up to you. And so we, we have a product and a service for both of those. Hmm. Um, and, and so just to get an idea for, um, let's say someone that's a part of your VIP program, and, and I'm not asking you to necessarily sell um, your program, but w- what does it end up looking like for someone, let's say that they started working with you six months ago on either strategy, either they're investing uh, or they're actively trading? Like what kind of returns have we seen with crypto assets? 
So on the investing side, uh, you know, you're buying and holding for long term. So obviously, when the whole market goes down for a year, um, yeah. you're not going to have good returns o- over that period, right? So mm-hmm. it depends on when you bought. So if you if you came in at the very peak a year ago, like mm-hmm. you're you're down on your portfolio. Oh sure. If you would have bought, you know, a few months ago, you could be doing pretty good. So again, it, it takes time frames. That being said, the market changes really quick. It's maturing really quick. So we change our investing thesis. And so we closed out 20 positions to make room for some new ones this year. Of the, of the 20 we just closed out, that was this month in January. Um, 18 of them were in profit. Two never reached a profit. Of the 18 that reached a profit, the average return was over 2,000%. Um, so, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, explain that for me. Uh, when you say that it was up over 2000, give, give me like, like the time and, and, and yes, yeah, so, those so, are, those are crazy numbers, Mark. Yeah. Uh, they are, they are crazy numbers. Um, you know, so, some of them were up, you know, only four or 500%. Um, one of them was up like 20,000%. But yeah, I mean, two thousand percent is 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 amazing. You you figure that the stock market has returned about six to eight percent, um, you know, over thirty years. It's obviously done much worse than that. And a lot of times, I think in two thousand seventeen, it was like the best year in history, and it you know got about ten or twelve percent. So two thousand is is absurd for sure. Um, but it's the price that you pay for the volatility. So right now, I believe we're in like maybe the best buying opportunity that I mean, besides starting in two thousand sixteen, uh, we have this chance to reset. It's kind of like like I mentioned, Amazon went from a dollar to eighty and then down to five. We're in that five dollar trough right now. Like that's where we're at. So um, to come in and take some long term positions now would be good. Now Amazon, when it dropped to five, it didn't go right back to eighty in a year. It took a few years to get back, right? Um, and then, and then it hit two thousand, right? So, um, I think, I think coming in right now and setting up some long term positions is going to be uh, going to be proved to be amazing opportunity when looking backwards in a couple years. Um, so that's a long term perspective, and and so that's how that's been recently on the trading side. That's just actively buying and trading, uh, buying and selling. Typically, all investing is about risk to reward. I want to make sure I have more upside than downside. So trades right. typically have like a three to one ratio. There's like a three percent profit with a ten percent uh, stop. And I think in the last month, we've closed like 42 out of like 51 trades in profit. Hmm. So like an 80, 90% win ratio, which if you could have a 50% win ratio, you're doing really good. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So 50, 60% is, is, is really good. And we're at a, you know, 80, 90% win ratio. It's not always like that. You know, we'll have one or two weeks that are bad. And then another hmm. week that's good. A month that's bad. A month that's good. So again, it's still a long-term perspective, but people like to actively do that. Um, they like to be involved. Um, and so there's just strategies for both people. And, and you know, the, the Market Disruptors YouTube channel is all education. Um, there's no selling. We never even mentioned sales products. And it's just teaching you how to fish. Some people want to eat while they're learning to fish. And so that's what the products are for. But inside there, we in, in our members area, we also have lots more information. So we're teaching you how to become an investor. We're teaching you how to be a trader. And, and you know, our hope is that uh, we have the most educated people in the space. Mm-hmm. We have the most, the people that have the best chance of, of success moving forward in life. And, uh, you know, we gave them fish, but then we also taught them to fish at the same time. That, that's our hope. And we have a pretty strong community that, that is, is believing in that and, and is yeah. doing it. Awesome. Well, Mark, you're a good guy. Um, so two things um, for the person who's listening to this or, or watching this. First, go to savingsangel.com slash wealth. Grab the report. It's called Understanding Tech Cycles. It's really, really super valuable. Um, and, and I think it's really helpful for um, just kind of setting that, 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 you know, establishing that mindset. They'll also get email from you, which is also super helpful. And then as well, I mean, you're welcome to learn about um, Mark's VIP program. And uh, I think you offer a, a 14 day trial for $7. If, if someone wants to get in, play around with the technology and see how it works. Um, so you're welcome to do that. Do that. That's the first thing. And then secondly, um, go to YouTube and hit subscribe on market disruptors. Uh, you know, I've been in this space for a long time. And obviously, there are a lot of people that want to make a lot of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but Mark, I, I always try to find people that are committed to helping make the world a better place and giving. Um, I really love the go giver philosophy where you just you give as much value as you possibly can. And, you know, those who want to step out and, and they want to engage and work with you, they're, people are smart. They'll do that. Um, so I really, approach, I really appreciate your approach and that you've committed so much to 
giving so much value. So again, those those two things, I think for someone who really wants to take that next step, um, you're going to be in a really, really great position. Um, any uh, further, Mark, kind of words of advice just in terms of like mindset or, you know, where we're at in terms of, you know, kind of this, this wealth cycle, this or this emerging wealth cycle that, that's kind of around us, um, that, that people should really be mindful over the next few years? Yeah, a couple things. One, first of all, like you're never going to get ahead in life unless you invest. You have to invest in yourself. Uh, you need to invest into your business. You need to invest into your investments, right? So um, working for money for the rest of your life isn't going to get you where you need to go. So you need to invest. I am not a fan of the financial industry. It was created just to take money from us. Yeah. Um, if you go to Wall Street and take a look at those buildings on the most expensive real estate in the world, they all got there because they're charging you fees. So I think I would never give my money to anybody, right? I want to be, I want to manage it on my own. And so I think just, just invest in yourself, you know, learn some stuff, um, try and take some control of that, you know, from that perspective, I'd say that. Um, the other thing that I'd say is that the internet technology has, has changed the world and it's, it's really just starting. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the iPhone is now 10 years old. Um, <laughs> the iPhone's 10 years old and, and that basically is kind of where the internet kicked off because it kind of put the internet in the palm of our hand. Um, and really just in the last couple of years, we're starting to see this world changing. And I think over the next couple of years, it's going to be a much different world. The way that we buy and sell stocks is going to be completely different. The way that we do, the man, we manage money is going to be different. Um, everything's going to happen really quickly. And uh, you want to be in front of that. You want to be a piece of it. That, that's where this wealth transfer comes in. And so don't get caught sleeping on it. I mean, you could miss the best opportunity in, in multiple generations. Yeah, pay attention, realize that the world's changing, harness it and uh, and accept it and, and be on the receiving end of the wealth transfer, not the losing end. Yeah. Well, Mark Moss, you are you are my official cryptocurrency expert that I go to. Um, great educator, wealth creator. You know, you've been around for quite some time in terms of creating wealth. And I appreciate that you bring so much uh, background from many other areas of wealth creation, real estate, the markets. I think even you don't, don't you have also like you've invested like you oil, you're invested in oil and 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 other commodities. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I, I consider myself the non traditional investor. I've been a professional investor for about twenty years, hmm. um, and uh, every, everything but the stock. You know, I, I do have some stocks, but you know, not like four hundred one ks and mutual funds. Yeah. But I'm always looking for outside, outside the norm type stuff that can give me better than market returns. So, um, I think they all work together, you know, um, and, and it gives you a a more rounded picture of everything. Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, finally, you're the co-founder of Signal Profits. And again, um, if, if you want to take that next step, engage with Mark, um, just look up market disruptors on YouTube, um, but certainly go to savingsangel.com slash wealth, and you can grab that free report on understanding tech cycle. Certainly, um, please share this episode with someone that uh, you know that uh, they, they're curious about what is Bitcoin. Bitcoin, you know, what's cryptocurrency, blockchain. Uh, Mark, you did a fabulous job in explaining all that. So, Mark, thank you so much for, for everything that you've done. And I'm going to continue to follow your work. And I'm excited to uh, join all my other Savings Angel friends in, in connecting with you, finding you on YouTube and, and, and reading that report. Great. Thanks so much, Josh. I appreciate getting the chance to talk about this. I, I love talking about it. Maybe you can tell. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Now, don't forget, if you want to take the next step and learn from Mark, I started getting his um, notifications now, and it's really, really helpful. And, uh, you know, probably starting this summer, we're going to do some uh, little bit of trading. Um, so that's kind of fun. So uh, go to savingsangel.com slash wealth, and you can actually get started. You can actually get a 14-day free trial of Mark's system. Uh, but definitely check it out. Mark is a good, good guy. Uh, definitely just works really, really hard to uh, educate people. Uh, but again, that's at savingsangel.com forward slash wealth. Now, are you looking to make some extra money this year? Now, here are 11 side hustles you can run from home that have the potential to earn serious money. You ready for this? This is good. Uh, and again, 
please share this podcast episode with somebody who you know could really use a little bit of extra money and they've got some availability to work from home. Number one, transcribing. Now, if you're a good listener and can type quickly, you could make some decent extra money as a transcriptionist. Transcription jobs usually pay between $15 and $25 an hour, according to the penny hoarder. Now, you can look for transcribing jobs on sites like Transcribe Me, Rev, Tigerfish, Quicktate, and Transcribe Anywhere. We've got all the links, by the way. I'm going to give you a ton of links in this podcast episode. I want you to go to Savings Angel, and I want you to find the article that says 11 Side Hustles You Can Run From Home, or just click on the podcast episode, and I'll have all the notes there as well, because we had somebody transcribe this. So, Or at least make some bunch of notes out of uh, this podcast episode. Number two, being a virtual assistant. I have hired many, many virtual assistants uh, in my business career. Virtual assistants provide administrative support to clients from their home office, ranging from managing someone's schedule to doing research and miscellaneous paperwork to booking hotel accommodations and flights. Now, for online marketing gigs, you could try searching on, I'm going to give you a list here, Cloud Peeps. Belay or Fancy Hands. You can also look on freelancing platforms such as Upwork. Now, another option is to reach out to business owners directly through email and social media and offer your services. Number three, selling unused or secondhand stuff. Now, one of the most popular side hustles lately has been Amazon's Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA program, in which you find bargain deals locally and then ship them off to sell on Amazon. Now, for clothing and accessories, there's a smartphone app called Poshmark. The website Declutter will buy old cell phones, books, CDs, and more. And you can comb through Craigslist, thrift stores, flea markets, and secondhand shops to find things to sell. Number four, proofreading. If you're a relatively fast reader and you have a knack for spotting spelling and grammar mistakes, you could make about $17 an hour as a freelance proofreader, according to the Penny Hoarder. Now, the work tends to market itself. If you find potentially embarrassing errors in a transcript, those really market to your client. See what I found? This is why you need me, Caitlin Pyle, founder of Proofread Anywhere, told the Penny Hoarder. Now, you can find proofreading jobs on freelancing sites such as Upwork, Fiverr, and Freelancer. Speaking of freelancing, let's go with that for number five. Now, there are millions of people supplementing their income by freelancing in their spare time. To get started, Forbes suggested you choose a niche in which you have some expertise. It's also a good idea to have a professional-looking website and an updated LinkedIn profile. That, By the way, go to our blog at upmyinfluence.com. Dot com, and we have a really great article all about updating your LinkedIn profile, especially if you are a freelancer in your business for yourself. Then you can send out pitches to once you get your website and your LinkedIn all set up, you can send out pitches to various publications and companies depending on what kind of writing you want to do or search for gigs on freelance sites such as Upwork, Free Up, that's with three E's, or Fiverr. Number six, teaching English or tutoring. You can earn up to $20 per hour teaching English to young students in China via video chat with VIP Kid. If you're eligible to work in the U.S. or Canada, a bachelor's degree and a year of educational experience, they're the only requirements. Now, another platform is QKids, which requires a four-year degree and at least a six hour per week commitment, and you can earn up to 20 bucks an hour. Now, Wizant, W-Y-Z, it's probably Wizant, is one of the largest operators in the online tutoring world. Another online tutoring company includes Ched Tutors, and then there's also BrainFuse and Tutor.com. Again, all these links are at savingsangel.com. Number seven, selling your crafts and artwork. If you craft furniture, make pottery, knit scarves, or sew clothing? Well, your hobby could be potentially lucrative. You can open up a virtual shop on Etsy or even sell your wares on Instagram. Number eight, taking online surveys. Swagbox is a good option. If you have the time and want to expend very minimal effort, the Swagbox mobile app is one of the best 
paid survey apps. The questions are simple and you can usually earn about $5 for half an hour of work. Number nine, dog walking. Yes, some people are too busy to walk their own dogs. Man, as busy as I am, I give Levi at least two walks a day. Like that's just like, that's our time. I love that time. Now, if you want to walk dogs, all you have to do is maybe post flyers in your neighborhood or set up a profile on wagwalking.com. Maybe join a Facebook group for your neighborhood or your community, that sort of thing. That might be an option as well. Number 10, cleaning service. Now, I might not be glamorous, but it's something nearly every business spends money on and usually gets done in the after work hours. Or if you live in warmer climes, consider pool cleaning. It's usually pretty chill, easy work, and you can make okay money doing it. And finally, number 11, rental properties. Now, real estate investing is one of the oldest and most popular side hustles, and new platforms like Roof Stock make it easy to shop for and buy income-generating properties with tenants and property management already in place. So there you go. 11 ways you can run a little side hustle, make some extra money, and make an extra money as absolutely part of living abundantly. Now, if you've loved hearing everything on this podcast, would you take a minute and leave a five-star review in Apple Podcasts or give me a thumbs up, click the share icon, whatever podcast app you are using. You want to know which one my favorite podcast app is right now? Right now, my favorite podcast app, grab this one in the app store, is CastBox. I like it because you can search through show descriptions. The user interface, I love uh, a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, So definitely check that out. Now, as always, if you have any specific questions or something you'd like to hear me talk about, you could drop me a comment in our podcast feedback over at savingsangel.com. There's a lot of ways you can contact us there. You could join our private secret Facebook group. Just search Savings Angel in Facebook, or you can call our podcast hotline right now. No one's going to pick up, but it's going to go to voicemail, and I'll listen to the voicemail. That's 407-205-9250, and leave me a message. I'll answer your question, write you back, or with your permission, I might even share your question or story with others on this show. In fact, I want to thank Carrie for just sending me an email. All she said was just a huge thanks and then sent me a nice smiley message. So I want to say thank you so much for that, Carrie. It really makes my day. So with that, have a wonderful week full of saving more, earning more, and living more abundantly. And thank you for listening. some serious tax time relief.